In your lecture, you were talking about Michel Foucault and yeah. how he fits into all of this. Um, what are, how, does, um, how do Michel Foucault's ideas um, translate okay. through your work? So, Michel Foucault uh, uh, has this very good term uh, called the, the disciplinary society. And a disciplinary society is a society where the hierarchies are pretty clear. You know who is your boss, you know who teaches you, like the kindergarten aunt, or you know uh, who know you should respect in a certain way. And at the same time, you can subvert that. Because if you know the boundaries, you know the frontiers, you can just like, uh, if there's a red line on the floor, you can actually step over it. I mean, there might be some kind of consequences for that, but at least you know where the line is and where you actually can provoke. In the meantime, we live in a society of control, as Deleuze puts it, and that means uh, power is distributed in a different way than before. Mm -hmm. So it's not as easy to spot the red line any longer. So, and if you don't know what a red line is, how can you subvert the red line? So if hierarchies get flatter and flatter and flatter, even in big companies, like your boss is your friend, and how can you actually be a working class if your boss is your friend. You want to hug your friend and not like say, hey, I need better wages and we have, hey, come on. Uh, so, so what can we do? And the same problem with art and of course internet memes. Because as Mood said before in his uh, uh, little speech he gave, uh, there is a glass ceiling of how weird you can get. I mean, what's that? So there is like, you cannot be weirder than, I mean, there is pedo bear and stuff like that. And there's even worse uh, craziness out there. So are we not like, where, where's this heading? So there is no, there is no way, there's, there's an end to provocation, let's call it. I could, of course, uh, as an artist, uh, I could go to China and try to get my hands on a Chinese embryo and eat it. And I would have like, I would have like good press everywhere and they would write about it and awful and blah, blah, blah. But who does that help? Nobody. So, so there's an end to provocation and there's an end to subversion. But because there is an end to provocation and an end to subversion, doesn't mean that there are, n there are no ways to spread your message and to actually try to change the system. That might sound very melancholic, but there is. I mean, I'm, I'm a leftist and I'm a postmodern leftist. That means um, I'm kind of melancholic, but you can count on me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you kind of see some kind of end goal for what you're doing or, or what are you trying to maximize I mean, here? I mean, you can only maximize the amount of, of, of knowledge, uh, especially in a world where everyone thinks that everyone knows everything. I mean, of course, it's clear for almost everyone that like the Western way of life is only possible because there are people dying somewhere and living in really bad conditions. But the craziest thing is everyone knows that and nobody can actually really do something against it. And of course, there's Greenpeace and this and that and blah, blah, blah. But what can we do? Uh, the interesting thing is, and that's a good example for memes is there is micropolitics, there is macropolitics and micropolitics. Uh, and micropolitics is really important because it actually changes your surrounding. The, so you have a certain, uh, like power, power is a liquid. That's like pretty much like what Foucault says is mm -hmm. power is a liquid and power is distributed and changed all the time. So of course there is the American president and he has lots of power, but it doesn't mean that we don't have power ourselves. Maybe not even like in a, in a way that like democracy can change everything and we can vote and blah, 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 because you know, that's bullshit anyways. But, uh, but uh, if I see something happening somewhere, I can just like step in and say, hey, come on, you're doing some like really sexist bullshit here. So you should put stop that. And even if it's my friend, I, I think it's even better because that's micropolitics. You can change with small steps, you can change your surrounding. And that's, I guess, the same way that memes work. Because memes only work because many, many people do many, many small things. And somehow this all like uh, creates some kind of uh, multitude that at the same time is working together. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's the, the future of, of, uh, of leftist politics, I guess that there's, it's micro solidarity between many, many people. And that has nothing to do with like PC or something like that. 
And so, I'm, because people always say, hey, come on, all the leftists, they're so PC and this and that, blah, blah, blah. It all changes and it all is in a flux, I would say. So, I mean, if we're aware that we can change the world in small, so it's pretty unfunny again and again to say that Bush was an asshole. Everyone knows that. But it's pretty important to, s if you see something that's really bad and you don't like it, do it. Step in, change it, and then you actually have done more than like shouting about Bush. Yeah. It doesn't help anyone. Yeah. Um, so my last question is, uh, do you have any new projects on, on the horizons? Oh, I was, yeah, so many. I mean, we just released, like, uh, uh, we started as a fanzine a long, long time ago, and we still publish it from time to time. It's this, like, 500-page book that you can actually kill someone with, because it's so, it's, like, four pounds, and it's, it's really big and stuff. We just published this, and I kind of like it, uh, because it's, it's almost like a printed meme in a certain way. It, pe many people only know it from hearing off, and then they have it in their hands and say, oh, it really exists. Oh, <laughs> here it is. Uh, and there, there are so many things. Uh, we are of course working on the next uh, Ars Electronica Sex and Tech uh, conference. And and when is that? It will be uh, end of September in San Francisco. Mm. So uh, first day will be the 30th of September 2010. So Interesting. that will be there. And we are doing a conference about cocktail robots in Vienna. What does if, that mean uh, exactly? Yeah, if you, you want to build a robot that serves cocktails, mixes cocktails, drinks cocktails, huh. submit it to us and we will pr try to present it. Cool. So well, maybe MIT can <laughs> Maybe they can do it. that. Yeah, I think that might be a good good proposal for them. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, go to our homepage, monochrome.at or monochrome.at slash English, and there are actually many, many things you can discover. Well, I'll, I'll be very excited to discover them. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for it your interview. It was a pleasure. Very Thanks nice a lot. Okay. And, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you all later.